used to call me on my cell phone. Late night when you need my love, call me on the cell phone. How's it going, bros? I need to stop saying that. I just, I, I'm watching too much PewDiePie and it's becoming, oh, uh, I have a question for myself. Do I own any other shirts? I swear I've filmed like the past two videos in this exact shirt. I swear it's been washed. I'm not that disgusting. Can you let go of my glasses, please? Goobs, 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 goob, thank you. I promise to make this video, um, I guess it's another advice video specifically about anxiety. If you didn't know, um, I have an uh, anxiety disorder and I'm doing pretty well with it. So I figured why not give some advice to some people who might not be doing great. Yeah, I asked you guys on Twitter if you wanted any advice uh, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just answer those questions now, I guess. When did you think you first showed signs of anxiety and how, and how did you first handle the it? I handled the it not very well. I remember my first anxiety attack. I was sitting on my bed, I was sitting over there, and um, can I just take a moment to say, Casper, you are looking so beautiful today. You are looking so colorful, and I love you very much. So yeah, I was sitting on my bed over there, and I was just opening a gift I got from somebody, and then suddenly my heart just like sank, and everything was spinning, and I just had to take a moment to just breathe a bit. And I, afterwards I was like, what the hell? And that, it was pretty scary. And then after that, I just started like isolating myself from people a lot. Just leaving the house was pretty terrifying, I guess is the way to put it. Like I felt really paranoid that people were out to get me and stuff. I didn't really know how to handle it because I, I didn't tell anyone for a little while because I thought I was just being stupid. Um, the start was not a fun time. How do I learn to take opportunities more often instead of backing out at the last minute because I've become too scared? You just gotta force yourself because you'll thank yourself later in life. I think w the main thing with anxiety is you've got to think about the future. Because when you have anxiety, everything feels like right now, like I'm gonna die. Right now is the worst time. Right now I'm so scared. But you've got to take a step back and think, okay, Next week, will I have felt better if I were to go and do this? If I were to take this opportunity to see friends or to um, I, I, if, to take this job I've been offered or something. Also, the more opportunities you take, the more you learn how to deal with those opportunities and how to handle them in the future. Even if you don't necessarily stop feeling scared about those opportunities, It'll become, it'll become easier to control your anxiety. You gotta push yourself and you gotta practice feeling scared so that you learn how to handle being scared. I don't know. Tips on controlling it without medication and tips on helping friends who have it. Well, I'm on medication now, but before, and I still do now actually, I shake my legs a whole lot. I know I said this in, the last video and people thought I should I said shave my legs I don't shave my legs I have wonderful hairy legs thank you no I oh he gave me a kiss thank you so much scoops oh another one oh I feel so special thank you so yeah I <laughs> I shake my legs a lot like I bounce them um I used to kind of hold myself back from doing that because I thought I'd be annoying people around me uh and now I just figured, hey, if I don't do this, I'm going to want to freaking die. So you're just going to have to put up with it. So yeah, I shake my legs a lot. I, I bounce my legs. I bounce them. If there's ever nervous energy in like my hands, I'll shake my hands. At the risk of looking insane, it makes me feel better. So if you need to shake something, shake it. Shake it like a Polaroid picture drawing is very helpful I think I said in my last advice video that or like one of my advice videos that I draw lines I don't do that so much anymore but that was really helpful it kind of gets your mind off whatever your mind was on before the drawing was very therapeutic and so is music music and making videos 
really helps take your mind off it. So if there's something that you really enjoy, use it to help you, I guess. And for friends who have it, ask them what makes them uncomfortable. Ask them what their triggers are, what makes them panic, and try your best to respect that. And respect them if they feel they need to take a step back, they need to leave the room to gather themselves if they've had like a panic attack or something. Another really good thing to do is once you know these things about your friend, once you know that they don't like certain situations, that they don't like to do certain things, if you're ever in a group situation and someone suggests something like, hey everyone let's go to a party, and you know your friend will not have fun with that, speak up and say, oh, hey how about we don't, we don't do that, we do this instead for like a different reason. Obviously don't straight up say, we can't do that because my friend here is a nervous wreck. Your friend will really appreciate that if you can speak up for them because it's it's hard to do that yourself and if you're ever with your friend when they are having an anxiety attack um a lot of people like to be left alone but it's good if you know i'm sorry i'm so sorry if you know your friend has an anxiety disorder to make sure you know what they would want you to do if they have an attack just go with it dude Go with it, my man. If your friend ever has a lot of attention on them, do something to draw attention away from them. So, you know, like, throw up your arms, be like, hey, hey there's an ice cream truck outside. Everyone go, go, go. And everyone will run away to the tr ice cream truck. Do you think one could ever get rid of anxiety? And then someone's replied to this saying, I'm not Lil Boy, but I think you can, Huni. Well, if that response wasn't sufficient, I I'll give my input as well. I don't think there's a way to completely get rid of anxiety. I think even if you feel cured and like maybe you get managed to get off meds and you feel okay most of the time, there'll still be times when it comes back and What's that sniff for, little goops? What have I done? I'm just sitting... What an attitude. Do you think it's better to try and step out of your comfort zone when you have anxiety or only do what you're comfortable doing? I kind of answered this in that other question, but I think baby steps, um, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone are very good. Otherwise, if you never push yourself to do anything other than what you already do, you'll never make progress and you'll never learn how to handle those situations. Definitely, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone is key if you want to get better. It's uh, essential. How do you tell your parents about it? I don't want them to react weird. I've had a lot of questions asking this and um, I I'm not sure how to answer because like, I don't know your family situation obviously, but I'll tell you how I would tell my parents about it now if I could redo that because I don't really remember how I told them. I think the best way is to first do some research online, find some reliable medical website that gives information on anxiety disorders, do some research into the different types of the disorders because there's a whole bunch, and then go to a parent or a sibling. If you're in a bad family situation, if you have a sibling who you can trust, uh, maybe go to them and get their help with how to go about it. But yeah, go up to a parent and say, hey, say, hey, I'm not feeling great. I'm not having a great time. I've done some research about it and I think I may have this disorder. I'd really appreciate it if you would come with me to the doctor to find out what the heck is going on with my brain. Maybe explain to them like a situation where you had a panic attack or explain to them how you're feeling and make sure they know that it's not normal. It's not just normal teenage angst and worry. There's other people who can support you. It doesn't have to be your parents. There's friends, there's siblings, as I said, there's other family members, there could be family friends, there could be teachers. Just because your parents don't support you from the start doesn't mean that they never will, but there will always be somebody. You just gotta look around. How would you explain the difference between anxiety and just stressing out about things occasionally? I think the main difference is an anxiety disorder is irrational and a constant daily struggle. Stressing out about normal things, like it's normal to stress out about exams, about friendships, about money, 
These are normal things to get worried about. But the point where it becomes a problem is when you obsess over it. I think anxiety symptoms overlap with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms in a way because your thoughts get very, they go in circles and you get very obsessed about things you're worried about. Going outside and thinking, oh, that car there, that guy wants to run me over. If I cross the road, he's gonna run me over. Assuming that if you get out of bed, like something bad is gonna happen, so you'd rather just stay safe in bed. Essentially, if it's irrational, if, there, if there's no reason behind things that you're worrying about, and if it's negatively affecting your life, if it's stopping you from doing things that you want to do, that's when it's not just normal stressing out. Okay, so I'm going to an appointment so I can get meds for anxiety, but I'm worried that I'm not going to feel like myself. So I'm on meds, I'm a crazy kid on meds. And I was worried about that too, but they'll start you on a low dose. But all I really got, I mean, obviously it's different for everyone, but all I really got was I felt very tired. It made me very tired. At first, it didn't seem to feel like it was, oh, Guys, he's like kneading me with his hands because he's getting comfy. At first, I didn't feel like it was working, but it takes, you need to be patient with it. It takes like a couple months to really start setting in. As long as you don't get any serious side effects, it'll be a gradual process. It doesn't take away anything from your personality. It just kind of numbs your feelings a bit. It dulls it down and it, you feel calmer and it's, it's working well for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but that's my experience. Why is it bad to self-medicate? And another, how do you seek help if your parents don't want to help? And what's your opinion on self-diagnosis? It's bad to both self-medicate and self-diagnose because you're not a doctor. It's such a complicated thing. It's like a chemical thing. It's not something that can be diagnosed or treated through some internet definition. It's different for everyone. For me, it just doesn't make sense to self-diagnose because like the day I got a diagnosis was like the worst day of my life because it's it's horrible to have that kind of mental illness label given to you and I just don't understand why you'd give that to yourself when like you're not a professional and like it's possible you might not have this disorder. I don't know, I just don't understand it. Yeah, that's why I'm against self-diagnosing. I know it's controversial, but that's just my opinion, guys. It's just my opinion. If you self-medicate, you don't know what's going into your body. If you're ordering stuff off, off the internet, that's very dangerous ground and you could do far more damage to yourself than help. Seeking help if your parents don't want to help. I'll put some links in the description for people you can call that are like phone call therapists that are there to help you. You don't need like any kind of parent supervision. You don't need any parent permission it can be completely anonymous there's also people that um, you can talk to them through a messenger if it scares you to do phone calls how do I calm a shaky voice I guess this applies to like speaking as well as singing I get this a lot when I'm singing a shaky voice often happens when you forget to breathe and that's what happens when you get anxious you kind of choke up everything tenses back here be aware of the inside of your like vocal cords be aware of the space, kind of make an effort to open your lungs, make an effort to like, get a feel for what's around you, get, get a feel of the space you take up. Consciously open up that soft palate at the back. Breathing and water. Water's good. How do you know for sure you have anxiety? I may have it, but I don't want to get evaluated. I'm afraid, buddy, the only way to be sure is to get evaluated. Push yourself, baby steps. First, walk two steps towards the doctor's office. Next day, walk four steps. Next day, uh, touch the handle, but don't go in. Next day, touch the handle, open the door. Don't go in. Next day, open the door, take a step in, and then leave. Next day, take a step in, make an appointment, then cancel it. Next step, <laughs> So I'm seeing a lot of questions about things to distract you. Get a pet. That is my number one thing, because when you're anxious, it can feel like it's all about you. But when you get a little friend, then it's not about you anymore. You've got to take care of your little friend. He's helped me a whole lot. I hope I've answered your question in some way. I, I'm also sorry if I've repeated myself, if I've said anything that I've said in the video or in a stream. My memory isn't very good. I'm sorry. I hope this video helped you. Caspi's giving you a little wink. 
yeah, stay safe and don't forget to... Oh, speaking of forgetting, I almost forgot something. I almost forgot. I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend and his movie. He made a short film. You should go and check it out. I've, there's a little a little preview right here. You can see it. Casper's modeling it. He's p poking his little face out the top of it. Some awesome cinematography. And there'll be a link if you click on that video or you can click on down in the description and you can go check out the video. Yeah, watch the video like the video um i'm gonna go do a wee and yeah goodbye i've been waiting and sitting and still i pick up the ring it's getting loud can you hear me it strips me up all the feeling i've ever had i made invisible scars